Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we praise you and thank you for everybody who is here today, both in person and online. We praise you and thank you for your son, for the salvation that we have in him. Thank you that our eyes were open. And Lord, I pray specifically for any today who don't know you as Savior, whose eyes are still blinded, that you would remove the scales, that they would see clearly who you are, what you've done. You are the Savior of the world. You are worthy of our worship. You are high. You are mighty you to be lifted up. Thank you so much for the snow. Thank you for the answered prayers for moisture. I pray specifically for um, all the firefighters out there right now, Lord, um, that they would know both your power and your mercy at this time. That they would understand that you are a God who made everything. You are uh, the one who's in control of our weather right now, Lord. You are in control of every single little thing. May every single one of us bow down to worship you and recognize you as Lord of all. I pray for our service this morning. I pray for Pastor Rob that you would uh, give him strength in his back in particular, that you would give him the words, that you would have him say uh, that we would be uh, a church who desires to honor and glorify you in all that we do. Bless our service this morning. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Please stand with me as we read from John chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Verse one. Uh, this isn't the right passage. <laughs> Did I put the wrong one in there? John 1.1? 1, 1? Oh, well, see, it's kind of important. So I'm going to grab myself a Bible and just read it for you. It's a good thing, too, because the other passage I have to read later as well. I wasn't as prepared as I thought I was. Hang on a second here. Sorry about that. You guys all know it's a familiar passage. But since we're talking about a vision for our church and passion, I thought this was appropriate to read. John 1, starting verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Amen. Let's go. I want so aimless, not filled with sin. I want to land like the Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night.
be free from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, oh, power in the blood. Would you or evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. Verse 2, would you be free from your passion and pride? And as I read from Psalm chapter 31, in you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. And for your name's sake, you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I re will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction, you have known the distress of my soul, and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin, I
Never stripe upon your battered back And every thorn that pierced your brow Every nail drove deep through guiltless hands Said the joy knows no end Redeem Morning. It is good. To, whoa! Now we're cooking with gas. Um, it is good to have you here today. I know we're expecting quite a bit of snow um, throughout the day, but I appreciate you coming in. I know some of our elderly folks stayed away today, and I do not blame them at all. They're home watching by way of live stream, and so we want to welcome them into our service as well. If you are visiting with us today, you are our honored guest, and we just want to say that uh, we are glad you are here. Ray, if we could bring up that slide, if you would just text welcome to 720-575-0464, and then fill out the information that that brings up, uh, we'll have a record of your visit. We'll send you a text just saying thank you for coming. And uh, we are so glad you're here, whether by way of live stream uh, or if you're here in person. Um, Diana Duncan asked special prayer for her daughter who is having a C-section tomorrow, correct? T I was driving yesterday when you called. Um, tell me her name again. I'm sorry. Leah. Leah. So please be in prayer for her tomorrow and the days following for both her and the baby. Um, I did hear from Georgia um, yesterday. She said that the memorial service went well, the memorial service for her sister. Um, the gospel was presented as well. So pray that it'll take root, that uh, family members will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So pray for Georgia and her family as well. Uh, they're out of town today. We have some that are on a, a little vacation uh, right now. We have uh, several that are away. Um, so please be in prayer for them. And then, of course, those that can't make it in because of COVID and different things. Speaking of COVID, I've been asked this, uh, I think, four times already today. What are we going to do now that the governor is um, changing uh, back 
to um, back to phase two. Um, I don't know if you know this or not, but our governor just lost two cases. The state lost two cases in federal court. Praise the Lord for that. Um, <clears throat> we are not trying to be rebels in any sense of the word, um, but I have explained this before. You render unto Caesar that which is Caesar and unto God's that which is God's. We have in this country, it has worked so well for over 200 years, separation of church and state. Thomas Jefferson, it is not in the Constitution, by the way, Thomas Jefferson coined the phrase, trying to keep the government out of the church, not the church out of the government. And it's been exact, it has been flipped around where the government says, no, church, you stay uh, out of the state affairs, but we're going to meddle in your affairs. Um, and that is what's happened during COVID. Now, please, we want you to feel free. Uh, if you want to wear a mask in here, wear a mask. Please feel that freedom. Uh, I just read an article this morning uh, from Tom Rainer on um, different things the churches can do during COVID. One of those things, the last thing he summarized was this. Be gracious. God has been gracious to us. Be gracious to each other. Um, we are going to continue meeting. We're going to continue having our services. Um, uh, Thanksgiving is coming up. Easter, not Easter. What comes after Thanksgiving? That'd be Christmas. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> That's it. It's all my back. It's my back's fault. <laughs> um, then Christmas is coming up. Next week is our um, missions conference. And, um, well, it's this coming week. It's Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning, of course. Um, and so we're just going to continue meeting. If it gets so bad that, um, uh, and I know the cases are on the rise, but hospitalizations are down more than half. Um, deaths are way down. Um, I'm not trying to put you in danger. If you feel like you need to stay home and watch by live stream, do that. It's okay. We completely understand that. That's why we have live stream. So don't be afraid to stay home if, if, and do this. If you're not feeling well, if you are not feeling well, stay home. Please listen to me. If you're not staying well, if, if, you're, not, if you're not feeling well, if your children are not feeling well, keep them home and stay home with them. Starting Friday night at 6.30, our missions conference starts. We want this to be one of the highlights of our calendar each and every year. We're going to do this every year. And what I'm looking for is participation. Just simply be here. Allow the Lord to do a work in your heart in the area of worldwide evangelism. We have a church planner that's planning a church outside of St. Louis in the Ferguson area. Um, and we have a missionary going to Togo, West Africa. He and his family, he is a doctor, going to be working in one of the hospitals over there, one of the mission hospitals. We have our very own Diana Duncan. There we go. It's coming, Diana. <laughs> it's going to be here for the missions conference. And then Paul Davis, uh, the president of ABWE, is going to be preaching for this conference. Listen, you won't even have to listen to me during this. It is going to be a great conference. Don't miss any of it. Friday night, 630. Saturday morning, 1030. We're going to be having a brunch. Um, we're going to take all the precautions we need to take. Um, uh, most of the food will be um, pre-prepared food. Um, and so we just want you to come. We're going to have a question and answer time with the missionaries. Uh, we're going to have a short devotional, and that'll be it for Saturday. And then Sunday morning, next Sunday morning, for Sunday school, the two missionaries, the two missionary men will be speaking. Um, they'll both have about 20 minutes each to speak during the Sunday school hour, and then during the church service, Paul Davis will be speaking again. Uh, so you're not going to want to miss it. So plan on being here for all of that, okay? Um, so looking forward to that. Let's, let's do this. Let's stop, and uh, let's have a word of prayer for Diana's daughter, for Georgia. Um, please, please be in prayer for Lloyd um, as he's going through these treatments right now. Um, 
the cancer treatments, uh, both radiation and chemotherapy, I believe. And so be in prayer for him, uh, for Elaine and Sven. Um, please be praying for them as well as they recover from their surgeries. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, hey, how is Greg's dad doing? Is he still out of his house? Uh, they, went back yesterday. they did get to go back in. Praise the Lord. Um, he was evacuated out of his house because of the fires. Um, Carice prayed for that today. Pray that the snow, um, that the, they'll get even more snow than what was expected. I know I hate saying that because uh, it means we'll get more snow than what is expected. But pray that the mountains get that, gets that snow and it really helps them get control of these fires as well. Father, we are so grateful to be together today. Lord, I know it's a different type of Sunday for us, but I pray that it'd be a good one that just binds our hearts together, but even more importantly, binds our hearts to you. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of prayer. Lord, I pray today that you would be with Leah, and Lord, I pray that... Um, you would be with her during the C-section, the baby as well. May both of them come out of it healthy, give her a quick recovery, and we pray that the baby would be born safely, be raised to honor and glorify you. Lord, I pray that you'd be with Georgia and her family um, during a time of mourning and weeping. But Lord, your, your word was spoken and the gospel was given, and I pray, Lord, that um, you would use that to plant a seed in her relatives' hearts that may not know you as Lord and Savior. May they come to know you personally. Lord, we pray for Lloyd and the treatments that he's having. Lord, I pray that you would touch his body and give healing. Keep him encouraged in your word. Be with Sven and Elaine as they're recovering from their surgeries as well. Thank you for him. Uh, Lord, that they are recovering, and I know Sven's desire is to be here at church. Lord, I pray that you would allow that to happen soon. Lord, I ask that uh, you would be with Greg's dad, and we thank you that he's back in his home. Uh, for Linda, Lord, her mentor who has a brain tumor, um, Lord, it, it, the outlook does not look good, and we do not know if she knows you as Lord and Savior. She probably does not, and I pray that she would come to know you. Be with her friend, Lord, that um, is going through a lot of struggles right now. Lord, I pray that um, you'd be an encouragement to her friend, and may we be that as well. Lord, as we take a look at our vision for you, I pray that today would be a day that we could um, start moving forward um, for the cause of Jesus Christ in this community. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you are visiting with us today, we are having what is called Vision Sunday. <laughs> this was supposed to be uh, kind of a post-COVID, let's move forward. And then we get the word from the government that, uh, from our governor, we're going to go back to phase two. Well, praise the Lord for it, but we are going to continue moving forward, okay? Vision Sunday for 2021, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know, this is the Lord speaking, for I know the thoughts that I have toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Do you understand that God has a will for Calvary Community Baptist Church? He has a will for each and every person that attends Calvary Community Baptist Church. What is his will for our lives? It's a will of peace, not of evil. To give us an expected end. What is your expected end? Well, I, I would say it is life. Yes, we will close our eyes on this earth in death and open them to eternal life. For every Christian, that is the truth. It's not eternal death, it is eternal life. Our expected end is eternity with Jesus Christ. Well, when we get saved, why did God not take us to heaven right away? Because he has a plan for us here and now. God says, don't boast yourself of tomorrow, for you, not, you do not know what today may hold. Don't brag about tomorrow. Serve him today. Well, what are the things that we can be doing? Our vision statement, reaching the world one person 
at a time. I purposely wanted to do our, our Vision Sunday the week before our missions conference to give us maybe some momentum going into the missions conference. Our vision statement, reaching the world one person at a time. And Jesus said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every single person. God's command to us. This is not, hey, if you have time, hey, if nothing else is more important to you, then do this. No, no, no. Christ could have told us anything before he ascended to heaven. This is what he leaves us with. You go into all the world and you reach every single person with the gospel. Till the whole world knows, you go. Isn't it amazing that in the United Kingdom in the 1800s, we had missionaries going around the world by boat, taking them months to get to China, the China Inland Mission being started during a time that it was not easy to travel. Now we board a jet, we can watch movies, we get fed, and we complain about how long the flight is. We can literally get to China in hours, Australia in hours, around the world in hours. We have the internet, television, radio, transportation, automobiles, yet we do less with more right now. What can Calvary be doing in this area of evangelism? Today, right now, what should we be doing to reach our community? Going to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. We need to start at home, reaching the world one person at a time. Would you pray, God, would you allow me to reach one? God, would you give me one soul? Just give me one. Can you imagine what our church would look like if each one of us reached one and discipled them? One person. We had a hundred people reach one person and disciple them and teach them to make disciples. What would our church look like? Reaching the world one person at a time. How do we do this? First of all, personal evangelism. Greeting our guests. We're going to go through the, all of these in just a minute. Creating community. Getting involved at church. Growing spiritually and growing numerically. Five things that we can do to reach the world one person at a time. How do we do this? First of all, First of all, there we go, personal evangelism. Witnessing and inviting. Witnessing and inviting. Well, Pastor, what does that mean? Witnessing and inviting. Well, start next door. Start across the street. Invite your neighbors. Invite unsaved family members. Invite the unchurched. Give an invitation. We have invitation in both lobbies that you can pick up, take, and hand to people. Now, I know it may be a little more difficult with the cashier at Walmart to hand them an invitation right now because of COVID. But you can still say, hey, I'm from Calvary Community Baptist Church. We're on the corner of Irma and 120th. We'd love to have you come to a service sometime." takes all of 10 seconds. It lets people know that you care. If you are constantly going into a coffee shop, invite the person or the people that you see in there 
every single day or every other day or once a week, but invite. Invite your neighbors, invite your family, invite your friends. Be inviting people to church. If you think this church is going to grow on the strength of the pastor, you are sadly mistaken. If you think the church is going to grow on the strength of preaching, we're in trouble. I'm glad nobody said amen right there. Listen, I have seen churches with great preachers that are few in numbers. There's nothing wrong with that. But a powerful preacher and they're few in numbers. I've seen a, a church that I used to be a member of. And the pastor was not a great preacher, and they ran between five and 600 people because the people had a passion for reaching people. The pastor loved people, but he wasn't a great preacher. If you think the church is going to grow on the strength of the pastor, that is not God's intention. It's not the way the church grows. It grows because you are actively inviting people to church. And I am actively inviting people to church. Hey, in March, March 26th, I'm excited about this. Invite people to the Sweet Life Dessert Comedy Outreach on March March 26th with Christian comedian Scott Davis. Scott has appeared with people like Mark Lowry. He's a Christian comedian. He travels the United States now um, doing outreach events. What he's going to be doing is giving the gospel He's going to be using Christian comedy. It'll be a great night. It'll be an entertaining night. But at the end of that, he also does some singing and different things. We're going to have desserts out in the lobbies. Um, I, I'm, my prayer is that we're going to need so much seating that we're going to have to do this down in the gym. Um, that means Rick and Greg are going to have to come up how we can do this down in the gym. But we'll figure it out. Um, but uh, I, I'd love to see three, 400 people. The tickets are $10 each. I would suggest buy five or six tickets. Invite neighbors, invite unsafe family members. Hey, we're going to have a comedy night at our church. Why don't you come? It's, it's clean comedy. It's great for the whole family. You'll have some people go, clean comedy? There's such a thing as clean comedy? Yeah, come to our church. It is going to be a great night. We're going to have free desserts. Come here, Scott Davis. And then they're going to get the gospel. Be in prayer for that. That we'll have people come and come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. How about this? Dinner for eight. What is a dinner for eight? Diana got it. It's a dinner for eight. This is deep stuff here, okay? A dinner for eight. How do we do this? Listen, set aside a night, invite two couples from the church. So it's you and your wife. If you're single, that's fine too. Um, It could be a dinner for seven. That's okay. Invite two couples from the church and then one couple that you know is unsaved. And just have dinner. That's all you have to do. Just have dinner with them. Hey, these are a couple of friends of ours from our church. Just wanted to introduce you to them. And just have dinner with them. At the end of the dinner, just say, hey, it would be an honor to have you come to our church sometime. You've made it personal. You've created a little community there. So when they walk through those doors, they already know three couples in our church. Host a dinner for eight. Hey, we have... Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. Those are great times to be inviting people to our church. Our prayer is that for those events, uh, Margaret right now is working on a children's program for, uh, for Christmas time. Uh, we're going to have another film from Meridium Films, um, and uh, we're going to have a great Christmas. Invite people to those events. Uh, our Easter Sunday. Invite people. They'll come at Christmas and Easter when they won't come at any other time. Handing out invitations to friends and neighbors. 
And then the last one is this, worldwide evangelism. Why are we having a missions conference? You are to go both simultaneously to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the world. Well, you may not be called to West Africa. You may not be called to Europe. You may not be called to Asia. But you are called. One of the ways we do this simultaneously is missions. I want to take you back to the first church. What happened in Jerusalem? Do you remember what the command was? You go both. I want you to go into the uttermost parts of the world. What did the first, first church do? They stayed in Jerusalem. So what did God bring? That's right, persecution. He brought persecution. What did the church do then? To get out from underneath the heavy hand of persecution, they scattered. Well, what did they take with them? They took Christianity. And they started little groups. See, what the government was trying to do was snuff out Jesus Christ and snuff out the church. Instead of what they did was they helped spread it. What did the apostles do? They went out and started churches. They planted churches. Do you know what the apostles were? They were missionaries. They were church planting missionaries. They died for the cause of Jesus Christ. Save one, John, who, who they boiled in oil and exiled him to Patmos, a prison island. They died. Planting churches, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Worldwide evangelism ought to be vitally important. It ought to be one of the heartbeats of our church. Sending out missionaries. In two weeks, we're going to be voting on taking on a new missionary. Her name is Diana Duncan. Diana has been going over to Togo on short-term missions trips. Well, they need her over there. And so in two weeks, we're going to be voting on taking on Diana Duncan as one of our missionaries. So she can go over and stay over there and not have to go back and forth all the time. She'll have the finances to be in Togo, West Africa. I am excited about sending out another missionary from our church. We have the Davises right now, and Diana would be another missionary sent out by Calvary Community Baptist Church. That's exciting, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Looking forward to what we get to partner with, one of our own in Togo, West Africa. You, you may ne never set foot in Togo, but you can be a part of seeing souls saved in Togo, West Africa by supporting Diana Duncan. Let's move on. Number two, that is the longest one that we're going to take, by the way. We're going to go much quicker now. Greeting our guests, making our church a warm and welcoming place for new visitors. Uh, listen, one of the things that I have uh, found out from people that are now attending our church that weren't associated with our church before is, you know, there's times that I don't feel welcome. Now, I know we are in the midst of a pandemic, and it's much more difficult to walk up to somebody and say, hey, welcome to our church. Good to have you here. What's your name? And stick out your hand and shake their hand. I know it is much more difficult right now. We have a family that is sitting in the middle of our auditorium right now. They've been coming for months. Do you know who they are? If you're sitting there going, It's not on them, it's on you, it's on me. You may say, but I'm an introvert. Doesn't matter. You can teach yourself, get out of your comfort zone, and just walk up and say, I'm so-and-so, I'm a member here. It is good to have you here, what's your names? Get to know them a little bit. Where are you from? 
Can I tell you, they are a sweet couple, and they're a lot of fun. You're going to find two people that are vastly different in this couple. I'm not going to tell you their names right now because I want you to find out who they are, but they really are about as different as night and day, and they're a blast because of it. They've got three sons that are warm, friendly, good guys. Get to know their situation. Pray for them. Leah Sherman, one of our single ladies. Do you know how hard it must be for a single lady to walk into a church and make it her own? That's a difficult thing. How many of you have reached out to Leah and said, I'm going to make it a project to make this lady feel welcome at Calvary Community Baptist Church? We're going to invite her over to our home and have a meal with her. I know. Sometimes that's a difficult thing, and we have, and listen, there's nothing wrong with having cliques. People that you enjoy being around, we naturally gravitate toward people that are like us. That's the way we're made. But if your clique is an us four and no more, us three and not ye, you know, things like that, then it's the wrong type of clique. It's okay to have a clique but make it a welcoming one where you're inviting more people into it. Hosting a meal at your home for new people, uh, for people that you may not know well in our church. Maybe it's somebody that's been coming for years, but you just don't know them well. Invite them out to a meal or over to your home. Host a smack. Smack people here, okay? What is a smack? Sunday morning, after church. You could host it right here in our community room. New attendees to our church. One of the things Leah said right before COVID happened, could we have something for people that are new to our church? Maybe a meal in the community room. That would be great. Why not host one of those? You don't even have to do the food. All you have to do is show up and welcome people, show them where to sit, what the food is, and be friendly. Why not be a host for something like that? Number three, creating community. Creating community. I think this is essential for our church right now. We're talking about having a vision, reaching the world one person at a time. Creating community. You can do this through Sunday school our adult Bible study classes, Sunday morning worship, small groups, hosting a dinner for eight, child care can be provided. Listen, this is what I would say about a dinner for eight. It is difficult to have couples get to know each other when your kids, if you have small kids, are running around. And mommy, I want this. Daddy, can we do this? Can we go here? Da, 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 da. And constantly interrupting. You're trying to make this a little more intimate. Um, hey, we want to get to know you. Tell us about yourself. If you want to drop your kids off here at the church, and we'll be happy to uh, watch them or have a babysitter here in our nursery, um, we would be happy to do that so you can have that dinner for eight. We're going to have designed evenings for this as well, where we're going to say, hey, on you know, April 15th, we're going to have a night of babysitting so you can have a dinner for eight. Now, we're not going to watch your kids so you can go out as a couple and have a date. Uh, this will be exclusively for a dinner for eight. Um, we can have signups for it. If you go, you know, I, I don't really know a lot of, we can assign people to your house if that makes you feel more comfortable. Um, but we want you to be a part of this, um, creating community, getting involved in local community events. I would love to see our church start reaching out into North Glen, Thornton, Westminster, our surrounding areas. Whether it's a, a Christmas event that they may have, um, some type of neighborhood uh, outing where we invite the people in our neighborhood, uh, you know, have some bounce houses and things here, and uh, maybe a water slide or something, and invite and say, hey, we're gonna have free hot dogs or free pizza, we're gonna have a bounce house, 
um, come and get people on our church, pro- uh, on our church property um, on, a, on a Sunday morning and just make it a community day where we're reaching out into our community and getting them to come here or our church goes and we help with some community event that they may be hosting. Just to say, hey, we're here, we're a part of the community and we want to be a part of this community. We have a beautiful community. People that need Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Number four, getting involved at church. Where has God gifted you? I think what we do so often in churches is we have this need. Whether it be Sunday school workers, which we have a need. Whether it would be, oh, I don't know, working in tech in the back which we have a need, whether it would be helping cleaning, nursery workers, teachers. We have a lot of different things that need to happen to make this a successful place. Can I tell you, God has gifted you in a particular area. So often what we do is we have these needs, so get involved here where you're not gifted. And you go, you know, I don't really like that. I'd rather have you say, I don't like working with babies. Okay, what do you like doing? I'm good with numbers. Be a part of our counting team. We also have a finance committee. Maybe that's your gift and you want to get involved in something like that. Start praying, God, where have you gifted me? How can I use that gift to help our church reach people for the cause of Jesus Christ. Listen, if we're not healthy in here, we're not going to be healthy out there. Help make us healthy in here by using the gifts that God has given you. I was just talking to my son this week, and he said, man, for the size church you have, you have really good musicians. Yes, we do. Praise God for them. Can you imagine if the people up here said, eh, I know I can play the guitar, I know I can sing, I know I can play the uke, I know I can play the piano. No. Man, it adds a lot to our services, doesn't it? I just sat back to this, this morning and just went, wow, praise the Lord. That was encouraging. I could have left after the singing today and go, I got something out of church. It was that good. They do it well, but they do it for the right reason. Not for you, not for me. They do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. So listen, if you can say, all I can do is clean. No, 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 no. If that is where God has gifted you, then do it. But he has gifted you to help make the body as strong and healthy as it can be. Be faithful to as many church events as possible. If the doors are open, just commit to being here. If you have to work, we understand. If you're on vacation, we understand. But if you're healthy and you can be here, be here. Can I tell you, no matter what you may think, the Denver Broncos football team not going to last for eternity. But what we do for Jesus Christ will. You understand that I enjoy sports. I do. I enjoy sports. Nothing wrong with enjoying sports, but put them in the right place. Put God first. Your family second. The ministry third. Put God first. Your family second. But get involved. Be involved here at the church in some aspect. If you're not involved, honestly, the church is meant to be a body. And if part of the body is out of joint, it hurts. I'm speaking by experience right now. I've got some joints that are out of alignment and it hurts. It happens in the church and it affects the whole body. Get involved. We have deacons that are involved in member care, involved in missions. Tim Brakefield is over our missions. 
if you want to be involved in some aspect of missions, how we can help our missionaries, go see Tim. If you want to help in member care, see Eric. If you want to get involved in tech, see Rick. If you want to help around the building, see me or Ron Tager. Hey, how can I help? What can I do? But there's something you can be doing. Hey, if you'd like to come early on Sunday mornings, a half an hour before Sunday school starts, and pray, come see me. I'd love to have some men that get here a half an hour early, and we just pray in my office. My wife would love to have some ladies that would just say, I would love to come. If you say, I can only come 15 minutes early, then come 15 minutes early. And just pray for our church. It'd be awesome. But we need to be praying together. Get involved. Then last. That says number three. Have I not been moving forward? I touched it. Stop touching things, Rob. You wouldn't believe how often I heard that growing up. How do we do this? Number five, growing spiritually, growing numerically. First of all, ask God to grow you spiritually. How do I grow spiritually? Be faithful in the reading of God's word, in praying, being in church, fellowship. Ask God to grow you spiritually. It's the key to victory. Growing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask God to grow us numerically. Let's ask God for five new families in 2021. Wouldn't that be amazing? To have five new families. The excitement that that builds. Five new families. We ask for five. Let's say we only get three. But let's say we get eight. But let's go out and invite Compel them to come in that his house may be full. This is his place. He belongs on the throne of our church, does he not? And the throne of our hearts. So let's ask, God, would you grow us spiritually? Would you grow us numerically? And then last, pray. 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 Pray for our church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for our missionaries. Pray for each other. Pray. And then you know what you should do next? Pray some more. Pray. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. A coming up on November 1st, the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. We ought to be involved in that. Hey, we've been encouraging you. Have you done anything about it? Hey, let's get together and pray that day. Maybe you want to do it as a family. Maybe you want to ask somebody to come over and pray for the persecuted church. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Praying on the behalf of other people. We ought to be praying for each other. We have a new couple sitting right over here. How long have you been married now? Three months. Three whole months. Do you remember what it was like being married for three months? And you're learning a lot, aren't you? Mark and Maddie need prayer. We have couples in our church that are going through a lot. Pray. Pray. Take your Bibles if you would. I just want to share a passage of Scripture with you, and then we'll be done. We're going to go back to the Old Testament, and we are going to go to um, the book of Haggai, chapter 1 starting with verse 1. Haggai was a prophet during the days of Zerubbabel when the 
temple needed to be rebuilt. There was the remnant of Jews that had stayed that did not go into captivity, and Jerusalem was lying in ruins. Remember, Ezra and Nehemiah came onto the scene. But this is what God says to the children of Israel. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, that person, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, The people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses or your roofed or your tiled houses? And this house, my house, lieth in waste. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, and you bring in little. You eat, but you have not enough. You drink, but you're not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there is none warm. But he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. You looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house, that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. Therefore, the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the, of the hands. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, which all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. And the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people did fear before the Lord. Here's what God is saying to his chosen people, which we are. Which we are. Hey, there is a job to be done. You can go out and you can get riches for yourself, but it is like taking that money and putting it into a bag which has holes in it. When Barbara and I graduated from college, my parents were there and my dad gave, us, uh, gave me $500 as a graduating gift. Um, I was going to go down to Barbara's house in Central Florida and uh, we were busy planning our wedding and different things, and um, I was going to spend a week with her, and we were going to go to Universal Studios. We were planning on going to Disney for our honeymoon, and um, I didn't want to go to Disney yet because I wanted to, the first time I went to Disney, I wanted to be on our honeymoon. So we decided we were going to go to um, Universal Studios, and uh, we were staying with her mom and dad at their house, and um, I was looking forward to that week. Well, that $500 was meant for that week. And I put it in my pocket and I put it down very bottom and I forgot that that pair of pants had a hole in the pocket. And I lost the $500. And I started to panic. The money was paper. But what it represented was a week with the woman I was going to marry. I'm, I'm calling down to lost and found. Has anybody turned this in? I am retracing my steps all over campus. I cannot find it. I finally see my mom and dad, and they're like, where have you been? And I'm like, dad. And I'm, my, my, my eyes are filling with tears. I lost the money. And this is what my dad said. Son, 
It's only money. It's easily replaced. You know what my dad taught me that day? Money comes and goes. People are eternal. Now, let me finish the story by saying somebody found the $500 and turned it in. I'm so glad I went to a Christian college. (laughs) The lesson my dad taught me that day and what God is trying to teach the children of Israel here is simply this. You've built your own houses, but you've not put me first. I can take that away. I can take your riches away like that. I'll cause a drought to come. There'll be famine in Israel because you've allowed the house of the Lord to lie in waste while you have built these little kingdoms for yourselves. Folks, let's build for that which counts for eternity. Let's build an eternal kingdom, God's kingdom. Not Calvary Community Baptist Church for us, but building a church for the cause of Jesus Christ, for his kingdom. Reaching the world one person at a time. May that be our theme, not just for the year, but for our lives. Let's reach one. Father, thank you so much for our church, the people in it. So many that are involved right now that do a work for you. Lord, they're never mentioned. They just do it because they love you. They they don't do it for praise. They don't do it for glory. Save your glory. And I pray your hand of blessing on them. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us would see people the way you see them, as eternal souls that'll spend somewhere for all of eternity, either heaven with you or separated from you in hell. Lord, may we be about your business, not trying to heap gold and silver upon ourselves, but seeing your word taken to the entire world. Lord, I pray that we would have a change of vision, that our sights would be set upon you and what you can do through us. And I pray these things in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Now listen, if you're visiting with us this morning, we want to get to know you. My wife and I will be standing at the back door. If you're visiting with us by way of live stream, thank you so much for being a part of our service today. It's been an honor to have you. Um, I know it's been a little bit different service. I didn't preach a message this morning, but I hope that it was an encouragement to you as a church, and if you're visiting with us, that it was an encouragement to you to come back. Now remember, Friday night, Friday night, 6.30, be here, be a part of it. Listen, you'll only miss out if you're not here. So please plan on being here for every single part of the missions conference. Carice? God, for his... Atoning blood that enables us to obey and reach people with the gospel. Please stand. Sing with us.
are dismissed.